Yo, my name's Sai, and I'm going to walk through how I like to make my own shirts. Let's go. I got two main designs in mind here. I'm going to go after my Sleepy Sive character, do my first pass on a digital version of this. I took one of my black book sketches and just inked over it here on Procreate. For the second design, we got to throw some graffiti in there. So I'm going to do this kind of sentinel design where we've got this eyeball in the center and then the graffiti kind of like popping out around it. Let's see if we can get a good picture with that without a glare. The graffiti reminds me of like the tentacles and stuff that come off like the sentinels in the matrix. That'll work. <laughs> Having the eyeball in there will definitely be kind of like an intermediate for those people that don't want like a strictly graffiti design. The graffiti can stand there as more of like a supporting pattern around the eyeball. And then you get the eyeball to, to draw you in and have a little bit more of a emotional stake in the piece. So once your design's finished, the first part is actually printing out your image on a transparency film. The main thing I need at this step is a really black print on top of that clear film. First print came out super light. And this is gonna be way too transparent. I'll give it one more go before we head over to Staples. All right, check out the difference here. So that was the best print I did here at home. Check out how dark this one is. Can't even you know, see my hand through the backside of it versus everything there. Happy about these. I think these will work great. We just gotta line them up now. When you do this, you can use the clearest tape possible. My desk tape is a little bit hazy versus packing tape, which will be a little bit cleaner. Now we're coming to life. Ooh, I think we got the sizing just right. These are gonna look huge. So I've got my studio in Denver right now, but I used to live in Philadelphia and had a pretty substantial set of screen printing supplies and set up there. But when I moved over here, had to get rid of all of them. So over the past like six months or so, I've been kind of hunting and scouring Craigslist for little bits and pieces of each of the equipment that I need. The center stage, the print setup is going to be this screen printing press. Mine here has four different heads on top, so I can actually do up to four colors. And then the deck here is kind of that t-shirt palette, so I can actually load either t-shirts or posters right on here, and that's where we actually get the design printed. So these screens are the main component to actually getting that image onto the t-shirt. But we first have to coat them with this chemical called emulsion. So I have these three cheap screens, just kind of came along with the, the press when I bought it off Craigslist. I'm going to need to build up a little bit of a dark box to let the emulsion pattern in here. The emulsion I'm starting with here is kind of in this cool purple color. I'll be using this little trough tool to apply that emulsion onto the screen. Let's kill the lights so we don't pre-expose any of this emulsion. So back using that scoop coater, I just make a quick pass to get a nice even coat of the emulsion onto the screen. And then we can kind of load it up into the box and let it dry for a few hours. Just gonna tape down the design here so it doesn't kind of shift around when we get the screen up. Let the screens dry for a couple hours, let's check on them. Oh yeah, feeling real dry. Now I'm setting up the transparency film here on an exposure unit. And basically what that does is it floods the screen with a ton of light, but anywhere that that design is, it's kind of blocked out. And then we'll be able to pull ink through the black area that was covered up. Three, two, one. Ooh, <laughs> nice. This is looking trippy. Never done a real exposure unit before. So now that our time's up, let's go wash it out. Oh, so I can kind of see a slight ghost of the design here, but it's definitely not washing out altogether. I think I overexposed this one a little bit so that too much light actually got through to the area we were trying to wash out. All right, let's reset and try that again. I set up a second transparency so we can actually print white ink onto a black t-shirt. Let's give that one a try this time over. And I think for just good measure, let's try to wash this out in the garage so we're not getting the extra sunlight on the whole screen. Okay, yeah, with this one, you can see the image is coming right through. All right, we're, we're in much better shape now. So all the white area actually doesn't have any of that emulsion on it, and that's where we'll pull our ink through. Just got to let this dry up a little bit, and we should be able to start printing. I got a little bit of extra, like, bare screen on the side of this, so I'll just tape that out so we don't have any <laughs> loose ink kind of spilling through onto our t 
t-shirts. It is outrageous at how much setup goes into actually printing these t-shirts. It can definitely be discouraging at times because, I don't know, you'll set stuff up for an hour and then it'll all be out of whack. So take your time with the setup for sure. And, and unfortunately, you can't really expect the first few t-shirts or posters to be perfect. So take a little grain of salt and, and just try to learn and perfect it each time over. Oh man, you can get into the weeds about different types of inks and whatnot that you want to use. Right here, I'm just going to be using a, a plastisol ink for the most part. Kind of a good entry point for quality prints. So the one catch is you do need a high temperature cure. So if you're just getting started, maybe water-based or something that can uh, kind of dry up in air a little bit better, might be a good starting point. So I'm just going to take my squeegee here and try to spread that ink out as much as I can before we actually put the first print down. That'll get enough ink into the stencil as well as, you know, spread it around so I can use the squeegee kind of in a smooth motion. First print came out all right, but let's hit it with a second layer of white so it can pop off and, you know, be a little bit more opaque. <laughs> yeah, that second pass really did as well. So the guy I bought the flash unit from also had the, the temperature probe. So I'm just using this to check and make sure we're you know getting the ink to a high enough temperature to really dry it. You can kind of see some of those vapors and stuff pulling off right now. It definitely gets the garage pretty hot with this thing running all day. All things considered, I'm, you know, my toes are wet now with getting this first test print off. It looks okay. You can see we kind of got some stuff up in the corner that's not like super opaque. Some of that's coming down to the actual construction of the silk screen. These cheap ones are not very taut and you can see the frame itself is kind of all squirrely. I'm going to go pick up some aluminum frames. The aluminum is much stronger than kind of the wonky wood frame here, as well as you also get a really tight mesh on there. So it springs up off your t-shirt. It doesn't get kind of like caught on it after you print it makes for really, really crisp edges on your actual image. And of course, we gotta coat these up before we can burn them. I went ahead and redid the black ink version so we have a you know opportunity to print some posters or white t-shirts there. I for sure wanna make some good t-shirts with the white ink version, so went ahead and made a copy of that as well. All right, let's see how much better some of these white poles are on the new aluminum frame. Oh yeah, even that first pass is like just as opaque as the worst parts of the original one. All right, we're definitely making some progress here. What's really important with that first pass is you can kind of see it's like consistent and smooth. It's not too much of a worry that it's not super opaque yet. Even in the stencil of the screen, you can see we still got a little bit of white left over in that image. Hopefully the next pull will actually flush it all the way out. Let's clear it a couple times over. Okay, yeah, here you can see that we've actually gone through and there's far less ink left over. You're kind of back to that yellow color of the actual mesh rather than having some of the white speckles. And look at that. Our print is so crispy now. That's not too bad for just two coats. Looks like something happened on the center of the nose there, but I'm sure that'll clear out with some of the other prints. Literally the best part about screen printing is you know the mass production you're able to do. I can hit posters up, I can hit t-shirts up, all with the same setup, and it really does make for some like fast turnover. Once you have everything really tuned in and established, you can crank out 50 t-shirts or posters in a couple hours and it like is no extra effort. You know, while I'm printing that poster, the t-shirt's pretty much dried up. Let's do a little test fit. Yeah, I think the sizing and placement looks pretty solid. I could maybe move the image up a little bit, but that's super easy to handle now that we're all set up. So I'm definitely excited to be able to turn over some stuff and, you know, add a little bit of volume to the, the production side of things. I just got an email saying the prints were done for the transparencies on the graffiti designs. I'm going to pick those up. I went for this kind of like logo S piece for like a front chest hit. I got a few copies of the chest logo printed just so I can actually layer them on top of one another and make sure that, you know, the black is super opaque on these. I honestly went pretty big on the graffiti piece size. I think we're like a foot wide and it's basically a circle. So let's call it a you know a foot around. So the design had to then stretch across a few different pieces of paper. So I got to organize these and, and make sure everything lines up too. One benefit to taking my time to set up the transparencies is silk screens are probably dry now. Let's go burn them. All right, we're getting a pretty clean image here. Taking a peek at the Sentinel design, that washed out pretty good. The S logo exposed really, really nice, and I actually did a, a smaller and a larger version. We'll see which one I end up printing on the shirts. So I've got one of my Orbit shirts here, and I'm just gonna use that as like a cheat sheet for where I should place my back hit for the Sentinel design. And that'll just give me a good idea about you know, where the placement should go for everything. The closer you can get at this stage, it makes alignment and setup so much easier with the exposed screen. All right, now I'm really getting eager to see what the print comes out as. Let's break into this bundle of shirts and, and get some ink going. All right, got to hold my horses just a touch. Let's get a test print down on the sample shirt first, just so we're not wasting a good blank. All 
Yeah, this first pass is looking solid. Wow, that cleared way better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, that's printed pretty clean. Let's see what the opacity looks like on two passes. Right now I'm just double checking the design, make sure there's no like really noticeable imperfections, even though I've inspected the screen right as I exposed it and all. Definitely always good to re-inspect kind of the whole design over now that you got a fresh test print. It's definitely not uncommon to have like a little area that's supposed to have, you know, ink pass through it, get a little blocked up. And it's definitely always worth the double check here because you don't want to get halfway through your print run and notice it and have a bunch of ruined t-shirts. I kind of settled in on three hits of the design. That first pass was consistently like super light. You can definitely still see some of the black t-shirt below it. The second print on occasion was strong enough to, you know, get a solid white print, but you know, it was real consistent come that third time over. So both on the sleepy side design and the Sentinel design, and then even that logo on the front, you know, all of them all together took about three passes for each. So, you know, you're, you're 10 minutes into a t-shirt at that point, but all said and done, you can still do this from home. So it's like such a fast turnover once you do have your setup going. And for me, I've been itching to get all these materials back and it has been a long draw to, you know, slowly piece each component together from Craigslist, you know, trying to find the press from somebody and then you'll be two months later and I'll have to find that flash unit from somebody else and then I'll slowly start getting, you know, my screens together. So this was definitely not a, a fast turn process, but screen printing is also great for that because you can kind of, you know, get a piece of equipment and then slowly build up the next one and the next thing as you go. You don't necessarily have to do, you know, the whole equipment list right from the start. Really do like how the eyeball keeps it centered, but all the expressions of the letters push it out to the kind of edge of the circle there. Really works a little bit better than I first anticipated. You know, of course the arrows do it intentionally, but I don't know, maybe the kick out of the eye is what I'm really focused on there. Or maybe the, the back side of the S there just really makes it kind of warp in on itself. Way back in high school, I was doing like these $60 speedball like setup kits and they worked in all honesty. You know, you got it. You were able to print a t-shirt off of it, but then it's quickly the idea that your quality can like get better and better and better. And screen printing is kind of that rewarding thing is as you learn your skills and you kind of you refine them a bit, it just compounds on itself. And all of a sudden, you know, I can be a month into this project, but it feels like almost effortless to get the next design rolling and the next thing over. So it's definitely a, a fun little turn and I can totally recommend it as a nice derivative to you know your creativity or your art styles. Boom. I got these huge 11 by 17 stickers. Can't leave without doing a few of those. It's of course way fun to have your own designs on a t-shirt. Not to mention you're making your own products in house so you know you can slowly put some cash back into your creativity. It'll definitely be a little while before I print enough t-shirts to, to pay back all these different components but it sure is fun to have this ability and you know I'm just excited to put it back into the arsenal. Whether it's posters, t-shirts, installs, you can print on so many different things with screen printing. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to you know, push the mediums that I'm going to be printing on myself. And t-shirts are such a good staple too. I can, I can definitely see that we're going to be rolling and pushing a bunch of these out now that I've got my process a little bit more refined. Definitely, definitely drop a comment for your favorite design in the batch. And we'll see what I come up with next time. After messing up plenty and uh, practicing up a little bit, a few of these are definitely good enough to wear myself and I'll share them with you guys as well. So head by the web shop if you want to grab one of the Sentinel designs or, or either colorway of the Sleepy Sive. I, I'll definitely throw some of these posters and stickers in the mix as well. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kind of like pseudo process video. You know, a loose tutorial to maybe introduce some of the ideas around screen printing, but all said and done, it was really just fun to be able to walk through this and, and share it with you guys. Drop a like on the video or maybe consider subscribing if you enjoyed some of the artwork. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.